Thank you for joining us today. I would like to start by acknowledging our hardworking public servants uh, up here with me. First, uh, my partner in law enforcement and friend, uh, Commissioner Jocelyn Schrauber, the head of the New York City Department of Investigation. Uh, always grateful to her and her team for their partnership and collaboration. Thank her and grateful to her outstanding team for their work on this matter and so many other matters we collaborate on. I also want to thank uh, the hardworking public servants here in my office who worked hard and long on this investigation, uh, including those uh, with me here today, uh, Assistant DA's uh, Guy uh, Tardanico and Denise Vassell, uh, the Deputy Chiefs of the Rackets Bureau, Judy Salwin uh, and Michael Ohm, uh, and the head of the Rackets Bureau, Jody Kane, who's also serving as our Acting Chief of the Investigation Division. Uh, and not here with us, but also uh, essential to this endeavor are the analysts, uh, investigators, and paralegals who commit their hard time uh, and public service to this work. Uh, we are here today to announce allegations that Eric Ulrich, the former city council member, mayoral advisor, and Department of Buildings Commissioner, used each of these taxpayer-funded positions to line his own pockets. Across five separate indictments, we charge that more than $150,000 worth of bribes were solicited by and accepted by Eric Ulrich in the course of less than two years in these positions. This is money that he never reported in his annual disclosures on his conflict of interest board forms, $150,000 from monetizing these very important public service positions. He is charged alongside businessmen, friends, and associates who paid him in return for access and favors. Brothers and business owners Joseph and Anthony Laveri, tow truck magnate Michael Mazio, DOB filing representative Paul Grego, also known as Dominic Russo, and former Department of Correction Officer Victor Truda. As an elected official and government employee, Eric Ulrich's duty was to the people of the city of New York, not his friends, not his associates, and certainly not himself. Whether appointed or elected, and Ulrich was both over the years, when you enter public service, you are bound to abide by laws, ethics, and regulations that are essential to the public trust. Flying in the face of all of that, Eric Ulrich, we allege, monetized each elected and appointed role that he held in New York City government, each and every one. Rather than serving the public, he used his roles to benefit himself and his friends. As a city council member, Ulrich hired his friend Joseph Laveri as a part-time aide, and he made sure Paul Grego got the paperwork necessary to secure a client's liquor license. As a senior advisor to the mayor, Ulrich helped Michael Mazio resolve licensing issues with the Department of Consumer and Workers Protection for Mazio's company, Mike's Heavy Duty Towing, and he helped Mazio's daughter get a better paying job at the Department of Correction. He also pulled strings to make sure that the very brothers companies, including a pizza parlor and a bakery, passed inspections and stayed open for business. And in less than seven months as the Department of Buildings Commissioner, a position uh, of significant trust for our city's development and not just the safety of our residents, but also our workers, he attempted to help Mark Caller and his real estate firm secure a zoning change to build a luxury building in Rockaway Park. He helped Paul Grego get a temporary place of assembly order for Puglio, a popular restaurant. And when DOB personnel resisted, he had them reassigned according to Grego's client's wishes. You may ask, what did he get for all of this access, for all of these favors, all of these betrayals of the public's trust? From Michael Mazio, he got a premium season ticket package to the New York Mets worth over $10,000. From Mark Caller, a discounted furnished apartment in a luxury beachfront building in Rockaway Park. From Paul Grego, a bespoke suit and a painting by 
Francisco Poble, the last surviving apprentice of Salvador Dali, and from everyone charged here, all of the other co-defendants, including Laveris and Victor Truda, he got cash, and a lot of cash. Most of it, we allege, went towards gambling, including at this illegal establishment that you see to my right. This is the 89th Street Cafe, the, an illegal underground casino that was partially owned by Joseph Laveri. We seized these machines uh, pursuant to a court-authorized warrant as part of our investigation. All of this, everything I mentioned, uh, totals more than $150,000. Those are just some of the allegations across uh, the five indictments. The connective tissue in some is that Ulrich, Ulrich is charged with trading these positions of authority up until the end of his public service as resignation as DOB, DOB commissioner, which came uh, after a court authorized search warrant. As I mentioned, the position, all of these positions are ones of trust and great trust. Uh, the position of DOB commissioner is one that we can literally see the work all around us. It's palpable, it's tactile. Uh, it is one that affects real and tangible public safety interests of all New Yorkers. Uh, that's one of the reasons why uh, uh, investigations into corruption are so important. The delivery of the public service that is so important to the residents, the workers, uh, and to all of us uh, who travel through Manhattan. Uh, when a public servant runs an agency that affects the lives of literally millions uh, right here in what I will call the best city on earth, I think probably people in the room will agree, uh, we must hold them to the highest standards. Uh, and certainly, we must hold them to the law. Uh, and that's what we do here today. Uh, now I want to turn it over to uh, Commissioner Jocelyn Strauber, uh, as I mentioned, the Commissioner of DOI, who you all know well. Thank you, DA Bragg. Uh, and I also want to thank the dedicated prosecutors, inspectors general, and investigators in both of our offices for your work on this important case, uh, only a few of whom uh, are here with us today, Inspectors General Andrew Sane and Greg Cho, and Investigative Attorney Alex Gain. Thank you all and to your teams for all of your efforts. The criminal conduct alleged here that DA Bragg has just described is clear cut. A high level city government official agreed to sell his access and his influence to his co-defendants in exchange for over $150,000 worth of cash and gifts including a discounted beachfront property and season tickets to the Mets. As described in detail in the charging documents, Mr. Ulrich, while a city council member, then a senior advisor to the mayor, and then the city building's commissioner used his positions to personally profit, expediting ex inspections, taking steps to advance a real estate development project, and getting city government jobs for his co-defendants relatives, among other things. As charged, Ulrich acted not in the public interest, but in his personal financial interest. And to hide his conduct, he omitted his bribery income from his annual financial disclosure filings, also in violation of the law. The annual financial disclosure process in the city requires transparency with respect to certain public officials' finances to identify and to prevent prohibited conflicts of interest between public duties and private interests. It is an important part of the city's efforts to ensure integrity in government. The process is particularly important for the position of buildings commissioner, who, as you know, oversees the construction industry, which impacts the city's economy, as well as New Yorkers' safety and quality of life. But this financial disclosure process requires that the public official provide complete and truthful information, which, as alleged, did not happen here. Thankfully, this investigation has not identified any public health or safety issues caused by the charged conduct. But make no mistake, the alleged criminal conduct does real damage. It limits the public's trust in government. It undermines the expectation that our public officials who act with tremendous power and authority will act always with honor and integrity. It weakens our faith that they will do their duty to put public good before personal benefit and to, scribe, to strive for equity in the distribution of government services, not to confer special favors for money. But this investigation and these indictments show 
that when a public official puts New York City up for sale and uses their government office, their influence, and their relationships to enrich themselves, they will be held accountable. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. And you, you, many of you may know this, but I'll just note that the arraignment uh, is scheduled to take place at 215 in Part 95, uh, which is on the 15th floor uh, at 100 Center Street.